Okay, in this video, I'd like to uh, talk about my approach to the big dig problem that we're dealing with here. Um, if you're looking at the instructions on Schoology, you'll notice a couple uh, issues that we've got here. Um, the problem is that water pools around uh, this workshop in the picture that's uh, shown below and attached in the document. And because water is pooling around the barn, it eventually seeps up through the concrete in the shop. Uh, and the water can potentially ruin the woodworking projects that are being built inside. So the objective using the skills that we practiced last week is to determine the amount of gravel needed in truckloads uh, to fill a trench that's dug around a barn. And then to answer the question, is it cheaper to rent a dump truck or drive a pickup truck and trailer to complete the job? Some things that we need to know is that the trench that's being dug is 162 feet long in this horseshoe shape around the barn. You can see that in the attached document. And the trench is going to be 12 inches wide and 124, I'm sorry, just 24 inches deep. Uh, the pipe inside the trench is a four inch diameter pipe, and that will reduce the amount of volume of gravel because it takes up um, space inside the trench that the gravel won't need to fill. And we've got some information about how much my pickup truck and trailer can haul uh, versus a dump truck. So um, the objectives here, or the homework for this uh, assignment, day 64 and 65, is to determine the volume of the trench. So um, what's the volume of the trench? And ideally this will be calculated in cubic yards. And then using that volume, determine how many trips are necessary um, we'll compare the number of trips in the dump truck versus a pickup truck and trailer. And then finally, use the number of trips to determine the total cost to deliver the gravel. Uh, so here again, this is that overhead view of the project and these blue lines show the direction that the water flows. And it's kind of hard to tell from this overhead view, but there's again, like a little bowl right here that this shop was built into. And so the water just comes rolling down the hill here and it just pools up around the barn. You can kind of see where the grass is dead. That's where the water sits. And so the idea is to build a trench along this red line here. If we can build a trench and fill it with gravel, that's gonna act kind of like a gutter would. Uh, the water will uh, seep into that trench. And then actually over here in this section, there's a drain uh, can't be seen in this photo, but there's a drain in the ground uh, that connects to piping that will run uh, water out towards the street in this direction. So um, that's our objective. If I switch over to the uh, document that you were given, the downloadable document, here are some more pictures. So this is ground level uh, photos. You can see again, uh, looking forward uh, towards that barn, uh, that there are some hills on either side. And these other photos represent the, or are the pictures from around uh, the sides of the barn. Uh, evidently here's a project that was completed inside that barn. So certainly I can understand uh, why this carpenter does not want their projects to get uh, wet. So this trench is also known as a French drain. This is a term you may have heard before. And if you've got this drain in this particular case tied into a uh, catch basin or piping, uh, then the water will uh, effectively get off of the surface, uh, get away from the barn and uh, move uh, away from the barn and keep it dry on the inside. Uh, typically trenches are between 19 and 18 inches wide. We're going with uh, 12 inches in this problem and they're uh, between 12 and 24 inches deep. We're going to go with a 24 inch depth here. Uh, generally what happens is you fill that trench with clean gravel that doesn't have any dirt into it and then uh, lay down a perforated pipe on the inside. That way when large volumes of water dump into this basin, um, they can seep through the gravel, enter the pipe uh, that have holes in it, and then the water will rush through that pipe a little bit quicker than it normally would by just flowing through the gravel. Um, for further information, financial algebra, I'm sorry, uh, math for tech students would have to take a couple extra steps. Um, not only are we filling the gravel and pipe in the trench, but we have to use some sort of fabric to help keep that, uh, that pipe clear of debris. 
So anyway, our objective is to find the amount of gravel needed to fill that trench. We know a couple things. The length of the trench is 162 feet. The width of the trench is 12 inches. And the height or depth of the trench is 24 inches. Now the volume for this trench, you can imagine, if you would, uh, the trench that's being put into the ground over here is just a rectangular shape. So this is kind of like a cross-section view of it. There's a rectangular trench here uh, and here and all the way around. These are just a bunch of rectangular shapes that are being dug into the ground and connected. So when it comes to the volume of this trench, all we need to do is take length times width times height. But there's a catch here. Uh, the units don't all match. And it's very important that when we calculate volume that the units do match. Now, uh, the conversions for these are quite easy. In fact, uh, I would say obvious. Uh, the width being 12 inches is the same as one foot. And the width, I'm sorry, the height here being 24 inches is the same as two feet. And so if I make those conversions mentally, now all units of measure are the same, and that's going to be quite helpful. But even if they weren't, the conversion is quite easy um, using our t-charts from last week. If I know that the width of the, I'm sorry, the height of the trench is 24 inches, and I would like to get that converted to feet, well, I'll write inches in the bottom and feet in the top, and I do that so that my inch measurements will cancel. And the conversion factor that I need to know here is that one foot contains 12 inches. And if we multiply across the top, we get 24 feet. If we multiply across the bottom, we have 12 with no units. And um, 24 divided by 12, of course, is two feet. Had the width or height not been uh, nice numbers like this, then using this process here to obtain some sort of decimal value for the dimension would be perfectly fine. So uh, let's calculate the volume then. Again, we know that the volume is length times width times height, and in this case that's 162 feet. I'll include my units here to be very careful about this work. 162 feet times one foot times two feet. Now the math here is pretty straightforward. I'll use a basic calculator. 162 times one times two is 324. And the thing you've got to be careful of here though is that this unit of measure, this unit of measure, and this one also multiply together. And feet times feet times feet is feet cubed or cubic feet. Now that's all well and good and a correct answer technically, but um, when I go to the um, gravel pit to order this gravel or to pick up this gravel, uh, they won't sell it to me in cubic feet. I have to tell them how many cubic yards need to be um, purchased. And so that's again fairly easy to do using a t-chart. Now, there is a conversion factor that you might be aware of, but uh, a lot of times students make a mistake with that conversion factor. So let me share with you this trick. If I type or write feet in the bottom here, I know that there are three feet in one yard. Well, that's one step in the correct direction to um, changing this unit. But we've got to be careful here. This cubic foot measurement originally was like having three of these feet measurements. And if I write three feet in the denominator here, that unit of measure is only going to cancel one unit of measure in the numerator. So I'll just do it again. Another yard is the same as three feet. And now I've got two foot measurements to cancel. And then if I do this one more time, that should do the trick. The one yard contains three feet of length. So this foot measurement cancels this foot measurement. And after I multiply, I'll be left with 324 across the top. That math was easy. 
and that's going to be three of these yards. One, two, three. So that's 324 cubic yards, which is good. That's what we're after. Divided by three times three times three, which is 27. Now, I said a minute ago there was a conversion factor that you may be aware of, and this is it. There are 27 cubic feet per cubic yard. And when I use a basic calculator, we can see that 324 divided by 27 is 12 yards. So I need to order 12 yards, 12 cubic yards, that is, of gravel. Okay, um, so that's where the video ended, and I posted it and realized I forgot something here. Um, this math in purple does lead us to the amount of gravel that would be needed to fill that rectangular prism of a trench, but we forgot to mention, or forgot to calculate, um, how much less gravel we need because there's a pipe on the inside. Now, um, I realized that maybe it wasn't super clear what's happening here, but uh, let me let me try to sketch uh, the scenario. Uh, we've got the ground here. This this uh, green line represents the ground. We're digging a hole, a rectangular trench, down into this ground, and it's running some distance around the barn. So we've got this trench here, and inside that trench, we're filling it with gravel. When filling this trench with gravel, that's going to let water kind of flow into this trench and act as a gutter to let the water flow away from the barn. Now the necessity over this and the fluid dynamics that goes into it is not part of the question for today. Um, what I'm really asking you is to find the volume or the amount of gravel that fits inside of this trench. That's all that we're calculating. And without the pipe, there's 12 cubic yards of gravel that fits into this rectangular trench. Now, here's the interesting part. Uh, to make this um, drain, this French drain, work a little bit better, I'm going to install a pipe right down the center of it, and that pipe is going to run the whole length of the trench too. Now, inside that pipe, there is no gravel. The idea here is that uh, this pipe creates an extra large opening or a void inside of the, um, inside of the pipe, or inside of the trench, I should say, and that allows water to evacuate much more quickly in the event of a, of a large rain event. So uh, this pipe, this orange tube that's inside of that rectangular prism has to be subtracted out as well. Now, uh, we were told that the pipe has a uh, diameter of four inches and the volume of a, um, a right cylinder, that's essentially the shape that we've got here, is equal to pi times radius squared times h. So if I had a cylinder here, I would need to know its radius and its height, and I can calculate the volume. So just imagine the cylinder laying on its edge, and that's what we've got laying in the pipe. Uh, now, pi is some number, the radius in this case is 2 because the pipe's diameter is 2 inches. I'm sorry, the diameter is 4 inches, so its radius is 2. And the height, or in this case the length of the pipe, is 162. Now, back to our discussion of units though, it's really important to consider these units, and that's why I suggest writing them down every time you do your your work here because it's easy to spot mistakes as you go. Now the diameter of the pipe was measured in inches whereas the length of the pipe was measured in feet. I can't perform this calculation and obtain a correct answer with the numbers as they are. The units have to match. So instead what I'm going to do very quickly here is take two inches and convert that into feet because I know that there are 12 feet. Whoops, let me try that again. There are 12 inches in one foot. So with this T chart, I can now convert from inches to feet. Multiplying across the top, I get two. Multiplying across the bottom, I get 12. 
and 2 divided by 12 is a decimal. 2 divided by 12, and we'll just keep a few decimal points here, 0.167, we'll call it. So equals 0 0.167. And since feet is the unit that's left over in the t-chart, I know we're talking about 0.167 feet. So I'm going to use that now in my formula. So pi times radius squared. The radius is 0 0.167 feet. And our height is 162 feet. So now when I multiply these, I know my units match because of the side work I've just done. Um, we should be able to obtain a nice final answer. Now, uh, since I'm using a basic calculator, I, I must obey the order of operations. So I'm going to take the uh, 0.167. I'll leave the number that's in the calculator there. Uh, times itself, 0.167. So we got to have to complete the exponents first, and then we multiply straight across. So I can multiply pi times this, and pi is 3.14 with some additional decimals. I'll use five of them, and we'll multiply by 162. So that pipe, um, when installed, reduces our volume by 14.165 feet. 14.165 feet. Now, the purple calculation, this is our volume in cubic feet uh, of gravel. Uh, this number down here is our volume in cubic feet of empty space. So if I subtract the two, 324 minus 14.165, then this is the true amount of gravel that should be ordered. Now, 14 cubic feet compared to 300 cubic feet isn't that big of a difference. Let's see what happens when I use that uh, new number in our t-chart to convert from cubic feet to yards. And I'll switch to a different color here because this will be the correct and final answer. So 309.835, 309.835. And again, this is cubic feet and just to be abundantly clear, I'm actually going to write the unit for cubic feet like this. Not feet cubed, but three feet listed here. Feet times feet times feet is feet cubed. I know there's one yard in three feet. One yard in three feet. And one yard in three feet. And again, the reason why I'm listing that three times is because one of these in the bottom cancels one of the feet measurements in the top. Another requires another foot measurement in the bottom. And then finally a third. The end result, of course, will be some calculated value. <clears throat> Across the top, the math is pretty easy. 309.835. But what's left are three yard units. And there's our cubic yard measurement that we were after. We'll divide that by 27 because that's the number that multiplies in the denominator. And 309.835 divided by 27 yields us 11.47 yards of gravel. So we can see that it's a little bit less than what we had calculated at the beginning of the video, um, but I would argue that this is the correct and final answer. And while, you know, to, to answer the problem at hand, we needed to know the volume of the trench. We now have that. We know the volume. We could place a check mark here. We've got the volume of the trench in cubic yards, and now we can figure out how many trips are necessary for each vehicle. A uh, pickup truck can haul two yards per trip, and a dump truck can haul 10 yards per trip. So now we can very easily determine how many trips are needed per vehicle. And then also, this is kind of interesting, uh, if I were to use my pickup truck and trailer, um, I can only deliver two loads per day, so that's going to make for a lengthy amount of time, and I have to pay $40 per day to rent the trailer. 
So not only are we going to need to know how many trips are, are uh, necessary, but now we're going to have to see how many days that's going to take if I use my pickup truck. Um, also, the truck will use two gallons of gasoline per trip, and based on today's prices, you can figure out what that cost would be. Now, a dump truck, on the other hand, of course, can haul more at a time. This truck can haul 10 cubic yards per trip. It will need to use seven gallons of diesel fuel per trip, and it costs 500 days or $500 per day to rent. Now, a dump truck is much faster because it unloads the gravel very quickly, and it can deliver up to five loads per day. So uh, chances are we're only going to need one day of rental for the dump truck, but we're going to need several days of rental for the trailer. So again, I want you to think about that. Uh, there's your challenge for these first two days this week. On Wednesday and Thursday, I'll give you another problem that's similar uh, that will challenge you to think just a little bit and utilize your unit conversions. Thanks for watching.